of course, any decision that is made about going back to work cannot be done in a vacuum. And uh, one of the great partners in the commercial real estate space here locally is Brandywine Realty Trust, a PAC member company, and uh, really a, a, a great partner to so many organizations in this region and beyond. And we're really excited here to have Senior Vice President of Operations and Sustainability at Brandywine, Ron Becker. Ron? Dean, thanks so much for having me. I'm hoping my slide is up. Everyone can see that at this point? It is. Thank okay, you. fantastic. Then I'm, then I'm already batting a thousand. So thank you so much again for having me. Uh, so just a little housekeeping uh, for anyone who is on the call that is not familiar with Brandywine Realty Trust. Um, just so you're aware, Brandywine is the largest landlord of trophy and class A office space uh, in the Philadelphia region. We have over 10.4 million square feet in Philly and the surrounding suburbs, including Radnor, King of Prussia, Berwyn, Conshohocken, and Plymouth Meeting, to name a few. Uh, this scale and platform allows us to, grow, you know, gives us really the ability uh, to accommodate companies as they scale, whether they are starting in a co-working space, uh, moving into a turnkey flex space, or going to a full floor. Um, we personally actually all own, develop, lease, and manage our assets, <clears throat> excuse me, which provides our tenants and customers with a continuity of service and a depth and breadth of experience, especially important at these times. So with that, um, moving into my slides, uh, what did we do? Really what I'm focusing on is how we looked at the return to the workplace. And the nice thing that we did was we were as proactive as we possibly could be <laughs> reacting to something that had never occurred before. Um, and, and what did that look like? It really focused on uh, the return to workplace and an approach that prioritizes health, safety, and security uh, of our tenants and obviously of our employees. Um, and how do we accomplish that? So what we did out of the gate was we started to move toward much more enhanced cleanings, um, be it procedurally with uh, a hospital grade disinfectants, uh, we increase the health and safety trainings and procedures for the building personnel, the contractors, the vendors, anybody who was really coming into that building that a tenant or a customer, obviously, could encounter. We wanted to make sure that they were well-versed, well-aware, and certainly cognizant of everyone's concerns uh, through the pandemic. Uh, we also went all out with signage. We wanted to message everything so that there was clarity around where we wanted people walking, how did we wanted them approaching. Uh, we were lucky that we do have a large percentage of our portfolio that is manned with security personnel in the lobby. In those instances, we uh, use that staff to help direct traffic, um, almost like a white glove service. Again, it gave a little bit more stability to the return, as well as a much better uh, feeling for everyone that was coming back to the buildings. Um, with that, we also went forward and, uh, again, enhanced cleaning protocols, the common areas, the bathrooms, the elevators, all the high touch point areas, doors especially, doorknobs, and everything else that goes along with that. We used our messaging to create a very circular rhythm through the building so that there was a noted entry door, a noted exit door, and the flow of traffic basically followed that, which allowed us to avoid people you know, bumping into each other, obviously, in the doorways. Uh, our janitorial staff started using recycled paper towels uh, as opposed to the reusable microfiber cloths, which obviously can obviously build up uh, bacteria on that. Personally, as a sustainability person as well, uh, I would rather go back to the cloths and avoid using the paper, but as long as it's recycled, we're still at least making a little, little bit of a, a smarter choice with that. Um, we increased our janitorial staffing. We, we put on people, we changed shifts so that uh, there was a higher concentration, obviously, throughout the day, and there is a higher concentration throughout the day than there is in the evening. A lot more people coming through, a lot more places to cover, so therefore, a little bit easier to shift around how we uh, staff that. All of our laboratories went to uh, touchless sensors. That was a very small majority that had not been completed already, but we got those done. Uh, touchless flushing in the laboratories and antibacterial soap in all of the dispensers. We made the, um, the conscious effort and the decision 
to go to a much higher grade of MERV uh, filter so that we could truly increase what was being captured uh, in the majority of our buildings. We were able to accomplish a MERV 13. Uh, in other instances where we had perhaps older systems, we went to the highest level of MERV filter that we could possibly accomplish and are still actually monitoring to make sure that the pressures are not off, that we're not, <clears throat> excuse me, creating an uncomfortable environment for people to work in, um, which again, uh, is, is the trade-off that we don't want to have occur. Um, we are obviously focused on health, but want to make sure that, our, that there is comfort within our buildings as well. So we will seek out other opportunities uh, should that prove itself to be uh, difficult. Uh, we did follow ASHRAE. We are not. We are accomplishing 100% in a number of buildings, but quite frankly, the right now the science doesn't really show it, and a lot of systems can't truly accomplish 100% fresh air. So what we are doing is maximizing fresh air to the greatest limit of the systems, so that it brings in, returns it, cleans it, and obviously with a higher filtration process, we shouldn't have that much uh, going through our systems. Um, what else did we do? Messaging. My goodness, did we message. Part of the key to, to something like this, again, where there was no playbook, was to make sure that our tenants were aware of what we were doing, what we were facing, what was going on, and that in return, we were aware of what they were facing. We did a number of different surveys to touch our tenants to get an understanding of what their thoughts were around Reentry, and obviously that was a moving target, uh, as uh, you know we didn't really have that information at the beginning of when it would truly happen. What was their concern? What were their concerns? Excuse me. What were their greatest fears about coming back to a building? We wanted to try to assuage those issues, so that as the return started to occur, that trepidation wasn't felt at our properties. We had our managers there to meet them upon their return. We took extremely aggressive approaches again in, in how we met this, fought this, and decided to, um, to move forward. Our amenity spaces, such as our gyms, still closed, obviously. Personally, I'd like to see them closed for a little bit longer than just the green phase, but, you know, not going to cut out uh, people's ability to use them if they want to. But our conference rooms were reconfigured in the common areas so that it enforced social distancing. It didn't allow for there to be uh, discussion around it or where should someone sit. We spread our rooms out so that they could not not socially distance. And therefore, when, this, when a conference room is completed being used, it's immediately sanitized. We had emergency protocols in place to meet with, if someone is sick in the building or if we are notified that someone is sick in the building, what are the immediate procedures that are taken? How do we address that, right? Obviously, it's going to happen. So we need to, we needed to be prepared. We needed all of our teams to be aware of it. And, um, and wanted to make sure that it was clearly messaged to our tenants. As you can see from the slide that's up, these are just a couple of the, um, the static uh, clings that we use throughout our buildings, um, branded, but certainly message uh, first. One of the best ones we have is in our elevators where it's the circle directly in the center, which by the way, seems where everyone wants to stand directly in that center of the elevator, right where that door opens. Well, we put that right in the middle and put arrows so that everyone can see the four corners. Seems everybody is, uh, is using it, following it, haven't seen or heard anything negative yet. But again, a lot of it is messaging. A lot of it is around making sure that what we are doing is being communicated so it's not catching people off guard, that they feel comfortable, they feel safe. Um, again, here's our staff. Our staff, one of the things, and I apologize for not saying this beginning, from day one, not one of our buildings was ever closed. We took the approach of doors open, lights on. We have essential businesses in a majority of our building, and we also have other businesses that may find themselves to be essential. We in no way wanted to impede that. That did a number of things. It gave us the ability to keep our buildings open. open excuse me. It also gave us the ability to keep every one of our employees employed, as well as our third-party vendors, our union contractors, everyone we found other things for them to do throughout this to both beautify and also help to disinfect and find our catch points within these buildings so that they were safe, and monitored. Um, one of the nice things that has come out, out of this is a new app that we've also launched. Uh, it's just hitting the market, so I'm really not well versed in it, but it is called Be Well. It is a branded app, and really it's focused on mental health. It's focused on physical health. It's an app that's based to, if you're at home, even if you're back in the office, to give you 
some outside uh, thoughts on what you can do to stay healthy and be healthy. And, um, and again, and when our tenants return and as they are continuing to return, everyone is being met with a custom gift from our staff to welcome them back to the building. You know, as I'm sure everyone can imagine, the panelists, myself, coming back is not the easiest thing to do. Some people are a lot more geared for it or calm about it. Others have uh, tremendous anxiety over it. We want to make sure that when they do arrive, they feel comfortable, they feel safe, and they know that Brandywine is their partner in their return to business. So that is what I had, and I, I hope that helps to answer some of the questions that, uh, that folks might have out there. Ron, thank you so much. Absolutely.